Beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls. How are we doing? I know, the intro was a little bit different. I wanted to try something else. So this video has been a couple of weeks in evidence gathering. And I've got to be careful in what evidence I actually show. Now, I want to draw your guys' attention to a channel that I've been watching for a while. I love his live streams. I love his content. love his investigations. He did an incredible job with, with Matt Benton, where they did The Conjuring House. I've done a live stream with this guy over on his channel. Um, my attention was brought to both Matt Benton and Entity7, Joe Vitale, when um, somebody that they worked with was caught staging by the, fate, uh, by the shape. And I was interested in how these two other channels were going to react, knowing that somebody they'd worked with was caught with uh, some shenanigans. I'm not going into that drama side of it, because it's all out there in the open for you all to go and see. Go watch The Shape, go watch Entity 7, and Devil Hour Productions by Matt Benton. And the whole story will unfold there. And as far as I'm concerned, The Shape, Matt Benton, Andrew Fatali all did the right thing. So as you're away, I have had a bit of a battle the last few months with Twin Paranormal being the biggest ones. We... I, I think I successfully debunked the fact that a smartwatch was setting off a K2 meter. I then went into great detail about how every video is demons, scratches, or whatever. And my interest in these guys and the faking that they're doing came solely from me wanting to be a paranormal investigator. It was solely these guys are stealing the limelight and the thunder of the likes of Ghosts on Trent, the Ouija Brothers... Entity 7, you know, name any of the channels that I support that are doing the real work, real paranormal investigations. None of this dramatic bullshit, no demons lurking in your assholes, in your ears and up your nose, not getting scratched up at every location you go to. That's where my interest in it came, because I stand up for the good guys and I shoot down the small guys and I shoot down the bad guys. It's just what I do. But something I never took into account was these fakers damaging the incomes and the reputations of building owners. Now in the UK, we are not as fanatical about anything like the United States are. While the US and the UK are quite similar in some aspects, we're also very different. We in the UK seem a little more subdued and a little less fanatical about some things. And that's not a negative thing. You know, Americans always seem more excitable, more happy-go-lucky. And when they're into religion, they're into religion. When they're into football, they're into football. But they've got the wrong shaped ball. I made a joke there. I don't even like football. Like, soccer. I don't... And when it comes to the ghost hunting videos... And I'm talking about ghost hunting videos here, not paranormal investigations. These teams will claim... Paranormal investigation, that's not what they're doing. They are entertainment ghost hunting. Fakers like Sam and Colby, Twin Paranormal, Exploring with Josh, Mind Seed, Oh My Gosh, etc. Now, some of these channels have rented Airbnbs with no paranormal history attached to them, posted their videos, and then the owners have got pissed off because it's impacted their wallets. It's impacted their income. Because in America, where the religion is far more deep and i'm not trying to be insulting to anyone that's religious in the uk but it just seems america is you know it's more patriotic it's more religious and the reason i bring that up is when you're in particularly religious areas religious states towns etc and these fakers are going into buildings and claiming a demon attacked me a demon scratched me demon at this house demon at that house but it scares people off from renting these places from paranormal investigating in these places because they've believe that demons could actually be there and it's a sad sad state of affairs so i would like to draw your attention to a entity 7 paranormal video i'm not going to show all of it because it's too long and i would like you to go over to joe vitale's channel octagon hall investigation demons question mark why do i want you to go over there even his intro shows up all the other teams that have been there for what they really are check this out now, obviously, I want you guys to watch the video for yourself. He's got a fantastic introduction. He's got a fantastic history of the place, a fantastic editing style, his voiceover work. Really good investigation, really good video. I have watched this twice. Once because I like Joe Vitale's content. The second time because 
this isn't like the other teams that have gone there. This isn't how the other teams are finding evidence of behaving. Watch, for example. Researching Octagon Hall's history, I came across some YouTube channels. A few YouTubers made claims they were attacked by a demon at Octagon Hall. Twin Paranormal, exploring with Josh. And I think that other guy is called Midwest or something like that. Okay, well, Joe didn't encounter a demon. Does that mean there's no demons there? The Hauntings. A spirit named Eddie. It is believed the spirit of a civil soldier named Eddie haunts the home. Eddie was shot in the leg and hid in the attic. Once Eddie removed his boot, he bled to death. Eddie's boot kept him from bleeding to death. Sounds of a dragging boot can be heard coming from the attic. It is believed to be the sound of Eddie dragging his leg. That's not a demon. That's a residual haunting type ghost. Other spirits believed to be at haunting Octagon Hall. Civil War soldiers, slaves, Mary, other Cladwell child, Elizabeth E. Akers, Andrew's first wife, Andrew Jackson Caldwell, Harriet Smith Morton, Andrew's second wife. All right, the next obviously text page should have the demonic entities attached right because plenty of teams have gone there wait where's the demons um they're not under there they're not under there at the end of my desk georgie are you a demon you look like a demon not a demon mm -mm. while i mock while i laugh what I've just done there is exactly what Joe Vitale has done to these teams, whether he knows it or not. I think he does. There is no mention in his research from anyone from the building or any books or anyone that curates or runs the place of a demon. Why is this an issue? Because Octagon Hall are losing money because people are refusing to investigate there for fear of demons. Researching Octagon Hall's history, I came across some YouTube channels. Who could they be? A few YouTubers made claims they were attacked by a demon at Octagon Hall. Who is it, Joe? Who is it, Joe? Show me who it is, Joe. Well, as a fat man, I'll be forked. The Crayola Kids twin paranormal and exploring with Josh. And I think that other guy is the... Is he Midwest Ghost Hunter or something like that? Oh, dear. The night a demon attacked us at the Octagon Hall. The scariest demon house ever. Octagon Hall, I almost cried. The sinister imagery, the scratches. Those scratches never appeared in the video, by the way. Not like that. That looks like he's been smashed twice with an axe. The bottom image, the red lights glowing out of the house, the demonic figure upstairs in the window. Now, I get that. That's a thumbnail. You can make your thumbnail look... However, when you're putting scratches on yourself, when you're not scratched, especially to that extent, that is an outright lie. And to claim scariest demon house and the night a demon attacked us is going to impact the earnings of this building that have been kind enough to allow you to go there. I hope you paid this building fairly. Right, it wasn't Midwest Ghost Hunter, it was Kalani Ghost Hunter. Demonic entities are rare to come across. It is, a com it is common for fake entertainment YouTubers to use keywords like demons, evil, and demonic. It is common for them to use such terms. I think it's very damaging to these places. Now, let's have a look, shall we? Bear in mind how rare demonic encounters are the catholic church they have exorcisms so so to some people it is real i've never encountered one so i'm not going to say it's real but i'm certainly not going to shit on people's beliefs and the fact that people have died in exorcisms i'm not going to trash that but then we look at twin paranormal 13 days ago they encountered a demon one month ago the zozo demon devil's cavern demon attacked attacked me devil's high school demonic experience demon trapped us at the conjuring house Demon encounter at the Conjuring Cabin. Scariest demon encounter ever. The night the demon attacked us. The night the demon attacked me alone. Scariest demon encounter ever. A demon possessed me. The night the demon trapped us. Demon caught on camera the Sally House. The night a demon attacked me. Haunted Hill House. The demon at Goatman's Bridge. The Devil's Jail. Devil caught on camera. The Devil. Like. Trapped in a demon house, demon cabin, demons, demons, demon. Sam and Colby exploring with Josh. Demons are real, uncut. The real exorcist house. That's obviously demonic. Stood there with a cross in his hand. The hat man, the night I almost died, attacked by a demon. Scariest demon house. Sam and Colby, let's have a little look at it. The demon of Chillingham Castle. Well, oh, Daz. I quite like Daz. Not as a paranormal investigator, his gaming stuff is hilarious. But Sam and Colby, Demon House of Chillingham Castle, the demonic secret society of England, the most demonic house in England. 
The night a demon attacked us. The demon of the Bell Witch Cave. A demonic encounter with the most haunted doll. Hospital of Nuns. A night turned demonic. Demonic encounter in Ireland's most haunted castle. I know that castle. It's not... There's never been any claims of demons there. It's rumoured to be the ghost of a brother that killed the other brother. A grey lady. Stuff like that. Demon on Goatsman's Bridge. A most demonic experience at the Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. Now... I watch ghost adventures sometimes. I enjoy ghost adventures, but I laugh at ghost adventures. I don't think Zach Baggins could conjure up all these demonic entities in his museum. I don't think Zach Baggins could conjure up a fart without asking for somebody to go and fetch it for him. Demonic encounter at the Sally House. You see where I'm going. You see where I'm going. All of these big guys, demonic encounters everywhere they go. It's ridiculous. All right, exploring with Josh is nowhere near as egregious with it. Maybe it's just clickbait. But that clickbait is damaging. It's damaging to places like Octagon Hall, these Airbnbs. And you may be wondering what the hell I'm on about. How would you know? I'm going to read some things out to you that I have been sent privately that is going to show these people for exactly what they are and the damage that they are doing. So just before I get into the, the messages I've been sent and, you know, a little bit of proof about the damage these guys are doing, I put in Octagon Hall into the YouTube search. Top of the list for this place... For advertisement is the night a demon attacked us at the Octagon Hall, courtesy of the Crayola Kids. Unleashed evil at Octagon Hall, terrifying paranormal investigation. The ghosts of Octagon Hall, right, see? The ghosts of Octagon Hall, haunted Civil War mansion, paranormal quest. That's more like it. They've got a soldier in the, f you know. I've watched a few paranormal quests, right, do they overly rely on the voice apps and, and that makes it into the thumbnail? Yes. Of most of these American bigger channels that I've watched, they are far less... They take the piss far less. I actually quite enjoy them. Scariest demon house ever, Octagon Hall. I almost cried. Octagon Hall, full paranormal investigation. The haunted side. I mean, they are full of it, but at least they haven't claimed demon. My scariest overnight stay at Octagon Hall. Very scary. Oh my gosh. So even though my gosh hasn't gone the demonic route, if a paranormal investigator wants to go out, put money into a place, and they do a little bit of research, the first two things they see are demonic encounters. They scroll down, ghosts. Third one down, demon. That's bad business for these people. These people maintaining historic buildings, landmarks, people with Airbnbs who's probably their only source of income, and these guys are damaging the income. So imagine if you will, you buy a pub, and your pub is haunted, and you're like, hey, I can earn a bit extra off this. We've had some weird things going on. We've had glasses flying off tables. We've got a couple of rooms upstairs. We could open this up to people for an extra income because the pub isn't doing so well because people don't go out and drink as much anymore. That's a good idea. And then somebody like Twin Paranormal says, hey, we hear you got a haunted pub. We're going to come around and we're going to investigate. Building owner's like, hell yeah. That channel's huge. Massive. Then they come in and they get scratched, attacked by demonic entities. And all your bookings for the next week suddenly go, I ain't coming there. I'm all up for trying to capture a ghost and hearing creaks and bangs and getting freaked out and watching my EMF meter flash. I ain't up for that. Also, watch um, Joe Vitale, um, where he gets his phone, he unlocks the ghost app, ghost talking app that everyone's using, and then he says, what's your name? Does this with his phone, and then a name comes out. He asks a few more questions, he shakes his phone, Names come out. Do you know where Joe Vitale learned to do that? Now, I can't say the specific building, but he investigated a building, and the building owners showed him some footage. Who's there? But when the video comes out, you don't see this. You don't see the two hours they spent shaking their phones. You see a couple of seconds of footage of these stupid demon and evil demonic scratch. That's the shit you see. So, Joe Vitale obviously goes to Octagon Hall, does an investigation, and the building owners mention they're not exactly happy. They're not exactly happy with these claims of demonic encounters, etc. So, the person that owns a few haunted locations in the States, on a Facebook, met on a Facebook post, so you can find it. I'm not going to give the name out because we all know how Twin Paranormal fans behave, and I imagine the other fans of these other channels may behave in a similar matter. So the guy that runs the place says the name of the person he's speaking to, shocked. Wasn't quite 
Shocked wasn't quite the word to describe my feelings. Words I can't use on the internet are the way we all felt. I'm going to take a stand and I hope more location owners follow suit. We've got to stop this. They're profiting big time off our backs and ruining our reputations in the process. The person responds back, I agree. I was honestly not happy when and I saw them do another location. We visit the same way. Yeah, we get frightened, but we have not ever seen anyone act like these people. It's terrible, and I'm tired of phone calls from YouTubers telling me they shouldn't have to pay because they have X number of followers, and we will get exposure. Then their exposure is lying about the locations and making up shit so they can sell their lies online for likes and followers and cash payments from media channels. And it's not just my locations. I know other owners who are taking extreme measures to stop this happening again and again. It's terrible, and I'm tired of phone calls from YouTubers. I just hope more locations wise up and stop with the demonic nonsense. And this guy owns the South Pittsburgh Hospital and the old historic Harriman Hospital. Let's see if I can find who's been there, shall we? Found it. Okay, so the first thing that comes up, the first one I find is Seth Borden. Proof demons exist, we'll never forget this night. And he teams up with Exploring with Josh, Sam and Colby at the old historic Harriman Hospital. And they've got a little description there, and it all seems quite believable. While roaming the, until we get to, while roaming the dark halls with nothing but a night vision camera, they find undeniable evidence. It's not just ghosts, but demons do exist. Tripods fall off couches by themselves, multiple unexplained bangs are heard, and more. All caught on camera. You want me to believe that a demon is in that place, and all it's managed to do is some bangs and push a tripod off a couch. That's not demonic. That's moronic. Exploring with Josh. Sam and Colby, Seth Borden, Exploring with Josh, Investigate. New abandoned hospital is now open to the public called the Harriman's Hospital. During the investigation, crazy events happened that made everyone scared for their lives. There's a selling point for this new business venture. Well done. And then I get sent some private conversations. Now, I'm not allowed to read this word for word and I'm not allowed to show them because I think some people are actually scared of getting sued. And it is basically... Um, Images of exploring with Josh, that Kalani guy, twin paranormal at locations. And then one of the building owners basically saying it's a bunch of shit. I can't stand this. Um, and the other owner of one of the buildings telling these channels to take that shit down. He sent a private message to one dipshit and got blocked. They do it at every location. So the next thing I'm going to show you is a podcast called Into the Fire Podcast. We have Bear, who I know owns certain haunted locations in the United States. I'm not sure who the lady is next to him. And we've got Tonya and Billy. Look at that beard. I'm getting beard envy right now. I mean, even if I knotted mine like that, it's only going to come to there. His down. Wow. So these guys do a podcast. These are building owners of haunted locations. I'm not sure who Tonya and Billy are. When uh, you're at the hall, we get to talk. The Ockingham Hall Museum, which is home. <laughs> Now, Bear makes his own coffee. Bear, I like coffee. I would like some of your coffee. With try, right? The Audrey Hall Foundation. Um, to better that. So, Bear's just said he's part of the Octagon Hall Foundation. He runs Octagon Hall. Place to tell a story about history and to keep the paranormal alive for people who want to do research and everything. Who are keeping the paranormal alive for people that want to do research. It's really about that uh, means so much to me. And uh, I thank you for honoring that when you were there and continuing that, 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 that style because uh, the people we have there come up there uh, anymore are all about me, 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 not doing anything for the paranormal, not doing anything for the, um, uh, the the facility itself, or or to uh, help it along. Uh, I know that uh, you feel pretty passionate about that, don't you? Right. Um, yeah. What what I've been seeing, <clears throat> it's been going on for quite some time, but now starting to see this kind of um, thing really get a lot of attraction, where you have these specifically YouTubers and and, and TikTokers as well going into these locations and, and making these claims that, you know, they were attacked by demons. Never mind, never mind the, the, the history, 
that goes out the window. It's like, yeah, you know, hey, you know, this is what this place was. Go and investigate and demons everywhere. Demons. Yeah. Um, I was at Octagon Hall, of course. And um, I don't know what happened to the demons. I don't know if they were afraid of me or <laughs> they just weren't there. I Did they have the day off? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, not for me. But for those on YouTube, certain YouTubers, it's all about that fame. It's the clicks. It's the money. And it's so I'm trying to be careful what I say here. I'm trying I'm trying to like watch <laughs> the words that are coming out of my mouth. Just let it um, rip. Let it flow, bro. Let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, if you want me to let it flow. OK, it's fairy tale bullshit. Yeah. Joe Vitale has just said that what these guys are claiming at Octagon Hall for YouTube is fairy tale bullshit. And the two owners up there, the guys running the place, have said, yeah. At least they're getting people interested in the paranormal. What? No. No. No, that is not. I call that, bullshit. I mean, they're only, yeah, they're only interested in seeing what happens to somebody else. Other than that, the majority of the people who mm. watch the videos, they're not going to go to a location and investigate it. They're not going to go to events. That That's not helping the field at all. And it's almost like they think they're a boy band. Okay? NSYNC's <laughs> not around anymore. I know you kids <laughs> on the block are back. <laughs> I like these people. But they're out here, like, attracting the younger kids that aren't even old enough to be out here safely. Right. Um, I had a location that they were like, do you know so-and-so and so-and-so? I'm like, are they even like 21? Like, are they like 15? And they're out talking about demons and charging $666 for a ticket at a location to come see them. And these kids are wanting to go. They're paying for it. Yep. Or they're wanting to do things that they showed that they were yeah. playing around with and they have absolutely no idea what they're doing. And that causes more issues too, because they don't know what they're opening up and getting. Yeah. When they're trying to communicate. So I'm not going to play any more of the podcast because it's it's an hour and 25 minutes. If you want to go and watch it yourself, it's easily available on Facebook. Um, I think it's on YouTube as well. Into the Fire radio show with Joe Vitale, Bear, Tonya and Billy. It's a great watch. And it shows, it shows two things to me that stand out. A, these building owners, curators, people trying to make a living off genuine paranormal investigations are pissed off. They're upset and it's hitting their pockets. Secondly, everyone seems borderline scared to mention names of channels. Channels like Exploring with Josh. Channels like Twin Paranormal. Is it for fear of being sued? Is it for fear of rubbing the fan base up the wrong way? Because we all know the shit that I've got from calling out the twins, for example. Now, am I stupid and fat? All right, I'm fat. Or are these bullshitters, liars, grifters, and fakers stupid? They're not that stupid because they are making a killing but it is all for entertainment it is not based on truth it is not based on fact and now we know it is damaging buildings reputations they got kids turning up that are underage for investigations asking where the demons are they are wanting to contact demons now i have never encountered a demon i don't know if demons are real but if they are and these kids are watching these shows trying to conjure up a demon and somehow they actually do it they're in trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. Now, even if we take all of that out of the equation, you know, you could say demons are not real. You don't believe in demons. I don't believe in demons. What harm can they do? What about mental health? What about somebody getting so scared that they believe they've got a demonic attachment or they've encountered a demon? And that's where these channels that are faking this bullshit become dangerous to people's mental health, people's well-being, as well as people's pockets. They are also damaging the genuine paranormal investigators. Guys wanting to go out and explore buildings' histories and celebrate history and show history. For example, I went to a paranormal investigation last night, less than 10 miles from where I live. I had no idea this place was there. And it is the oldest man-made structure in the country that I live. I had no idea it was there. We get there. We start filming. The place has a really cool name. It is called The Restless Dead. Oh, yeah. 
no demons, no demonic entities. So my video is not tailored for demons and demonic entities. I go into the history of the place. I go into, you know, how it was constructed, the, the amount of people it took to construct it in Neolithic Wales, which was 6,000 years ago. That's right. I went to a building that's 6,000 years old. It's incredible. And that video will be out soon. I didn't claim there was any demonic attachments. I never even claimed there was anything evil there. In fact, until I review the footage, I don't know if we captured anything. There were a few things we were like, we need to review that. But, and this is a place where pagans and witches and all sorts visit. And there was evidence there of some sort of rituals or spell casting. I'm not saying any of it was dark or evil. It's possibly the exact opposite of that. Because I, I know somebody that goes there twice a year and does, you know, the Wiccan... Done some Wiccan practicing, which is, you know, to empower, to make one with nature, that sort of thing. I don't know anywhere near enough about it to go into in detail. I imagine if somebody else goes there, finds what we found hidden in one of the walls and finds all the other stuff that's in bundles around the place, they're going to be like, this is witchcraft. Conjuring demons. What that then does is a 6,000 year old, old historical monument that's old by Cadu Wales, which means it's looked after suddenly gets a negative reputation. And then you start getting the wrong type of people going there, drawing satanic imagery around there on a 6,000 year old building. There was no graffiti or anything when I got there. And I hope it stays that way. This is something that needs to be highlighted, that these massive paranormal channels are damaging the reputation of buildings and building owners, and they're impacting people's pockets, and they're impacting paranormal investigators, legitimate investigators. Because any of those teams that I have mentioned, I don't think are paranormal investigators. They are entertainment ghost hunters. There is a massive difference. And the sooner the people start realizing the difference, the better we'll all be. In fact, I think that all of these fakers, grifters, and all those lot should actually state in every one of the channel descriptions this is for entertainment this is not a paranormal investigation this is a ghost hunting show leave your thoughts in the comment section down below if you're gonna come in with hate you'll either get deleted and blocked or i'll fire right back at you with something you don't want to hear much love to you all beardo out <laughs>